Look at me when I'm talking to you. He's been referred to as one of the GOATs, and many credit their success to him. From the steady rise of his career as an artist from New Orleans, here's how Lil Wayne fought through adversity to make one of the best comebacks in history, and how long it took for his most anticipated album ever to drop. Dwayne Michael Carter Jr., otherwise known as Lil Wayne, kicked off his music career in 1995. Birdman signed Wayne to Cash Money Records when he was only 12, making him the youngest member at the label. In 1999, Wheezy dropped his solo debut album called The Block Is Hot. The project was written and produced by the likes of Manny Fresh, Wayne, Brian Williams, and Ronald Williams. Wayne recorded the album from 1997 to 1999, giving him two years to perfect his very first solo piece. Universal Records released the album on November 2, 1999, and from then on, things were never the same. Wayne's album was originally set to be called Ride at Night, but ended up being named The Block is Hot. Riding on the waves of his success, Wheezy was already cooking up new material for his next album. The Carter debuted in 2004 and went up against other great projects that year, such as Kanye West's College Dropout. He took no time off and began working on The Carter 2. Yeah, alter nigga, Nina, talk to a nigga. Take a chunk out your body like a shark bit a nigga. I'm Part 2 features artists such as Nicki, Birdman, and Robin Thicke. After dropping a collab album afterwards with Birdman, Wayne went back to the studio to produce an album that would go down as one of the greatest projects ever made. The Carter 3 had other promising acts on the rise, such as T-Pain, Jay-Z, and Babyface. His highly anticipated third studio album dropped on June 10, 2008, despite previous track leaks. Kanye, who at this time had been collabing with prominent artists in the industry, sent Lil Wayne about 20 potential beats to use in his album. Of the 20, only two beats made it to the final cut of the album, which were Let the Beat Build and Comfortable. The Carter 3 album sent shockwaves to fans all around, and many referred to it as his best work yet. Needless to say, the album lived up to people's expectations. People praise Lil Wayne for being one of the best in the game after dropping Carter 3, but that title slowly diminished. Wayne often referred to himself as a Martian, or someone not of this world. He portrayed himself as some kind of doctor trying to step in and save hip-hop. He started boasting about being shot even if it was a self-inflicted wound. Despite some considering him whack or untalented, many critics praised him for being weird and called him one of the best unusual rappers of all time. There's no doubt Wayne's creativity and wordplay is enough to let his music speak for itself, with deep tracks such as Tie My Hands, which was an ode to victims recovering from the storm that hit New Orleans. As time went on, Lil Wayne was sought after as a guest star on screen. While Carter 3 was his most profound album, his peak was drawing to an end. There were a few contributing factors to his downfall. For one, the weirdness or uniqueness Wayne wanted so bad seemed to be drawing people away. Not to mention, he made it clear he wanted to attempt a rock album, but couldn't play the guitar to save his life. With critics weighing in heavily, Wayne dropped his album Rebirth in 2010. Some critics were nicer than others, and one suggested it would have been better if the songs were parodies. Another critic claimed it should have gotten the award for Worst Album of the Year. Just after the release of his project, Wayne landed himself in jail on gun charges. One documentary series showed the amount of codeine Lil Wayne would binge after being released. Over the course of the next few years, he put out some mediocre albums and features, but fans were craving something similar to Carter III. With his personal struggles being broadcasted, and people bashing him for making super odd remarks claiming racism didn't exist, that was seriously odd. Things weren't looking too bright. Afterwards, he found himself in lawsuits with Cash Money Records, Birdman, and Universal. Due to the lawsuit issues, the album was delayed for nearly seven years. Carter V was set to drop in 2013, but things came to a halt when lawsuits popped up. Birdman is said to have delayed the release when the two went through a three-year battle. Shots were raining all around. No, literally, people shot up Lil Wayne's tour bus. Who was behind the shooting? Well, Young Thug's manager was ultimately arrested, and Wayne fired back with a diss track. But all the while, Wayne kept busy making music. With pent-up emotions running at an all-time high, he let it all out in the booth. 
fans saw a beam of light at the end of the tunnel for Carter 5 when Drake tweeted the album will drop in May of 2014. Just a month later, it was announced the project would be once again delayed for the time being. After many rumors and tweets from potential collabs, Wayne took to Twitter at the end of the year to address fans and said, I am a prisoner and so is my creativity. Again, I am truly sorry and I don't blame you if you're fed up with waiting for me in this album, but thank you. Wayne continued to drop other mixtapes over the years, but none were compared to the one he was sitting on. In September of 2015, after the lawsuits with Birdman and Cash Money came flooding in, Lil Wayne announced the album was complete. The lawsuit brought tension between Birdman and Wayne. Birdman claimed it was all love and in the bigger picture saw Wayne as his son. Wayne wasn't so sure, and things eventually boiled over and Birdman fired a diss at Wayne on his track, Fuck Him. Shortly after, Birdman cleared the air saying it wasn't him who was holding back the album from releasing. Things are at an all-time high for Wayne and he's quick to let fans know his frustration. He's also quick to let his haters have a piece of his mind. In September of 2016, Wayne took it up on himself to fire back at Birdman in the track Grateful. In his verse, Wayne said, they can't put no more Wheezy Baby out. That's that cash money vasectomy. Mm. If fans or critics weren't aware of the inner turmoil he was going through, Solange's track with Wayne on her single Mad touched on his dark attempts of suicide. Once Wayne was able to get a green light for Carter 5, he contemplated dropping it through other platforms. He discussed releasing the project through Jay-Z's Rock Nation. After Martin Scarelli was ordered to give the album back and the Cash Money lawsuit was settled, the album was cleared at last. In August of 2018, Birdman openly apologized to Wayne for their beef. Given that a few years had passed, the two squashed their beef and just in time for the Carter 3 anniversary. In September, Wheezy became the sole owner of Young Money and it was said the Carter 5 would be released in late September. On the 28th of September, the highly anticipated Carter 5 was released by Young Money and Republic Records. Some artists to feature on the album include Travis Scott, Nicki Minaj, Snoop Dogg, and XXXTentacion. For fans, the album was precisely what they had been wishing for. It was one of the most critically acclaimed pieces and debuted at number one on the Billboard 200. The album received almost a half a million streams in the first week alone. It was the perfect follow-up to the Carter 3 with hits such as Let It All Work Out and Don't Cry, which featured the late XXXTentacion. In the early 2000s, Wayne was considered one of the greats, and just because he encountered a few obstacles doesn't mean he stopped being great. Even if he was dealing with drug abuse, prison, and going back and forth from the hospital, he never stopped trying to get his message out there with music. Many were quick to turn a cold shoulder to the slander he'd received from his label and fans. But all the while, Wayne was building up the anticipation and fault for the Carter Five to see the light of day. From his rise in the 90s to his splash with hit projects, we covered Wayne's diversity as an artist and the obstacles he's had to overcome in his career and personal life. Be sure to let us know your favorite Wheezy track and what album is your favorite. Also, let us know about what you thought about all the beef. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lil Wayne.